make sure I speak. What's going on, folks? Another edition of X's and O's Sports Speak. I got a special guest with me today, one of my favorite dudes to work with, one of my favorite guys in the district of Piedmont Public Schools. He's the head wrestling coach, and the dude knows a little something about just about everything, and we're going to dig into all of that as we go. I got Eric Ford with me, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing, Mr. Ford? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you for the awesome introduction. Oh, you know, I tried to make it brief <laughs> with a, as little bit of brown nosing as possible. I like it. Now listen, man, let, let's, break, let's break this down. Because I'm, I'm sort of a city guy, right? Mm -hmm. I'm Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's home. You are from Chickasha, am I correct? Chickasha, Oklahoma. That's right. Fighting chick. Fighting chick. Very proud people out there, aren't they? Uh, yes. I, everybody I know that's from Chickasha is proud to be a fighting chick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so born and raised. Now tell me about life in Chickasha as a young boy. man. How'd you come up? Uh, I came up in a really good situation. Great parents, uh, great family. Um, a lot of support, but um, you know, just growing up, I just always remember being with my family, having a good time, and it always being somewhat laid back. Um, not a real fast moving pace, I guess, in Chickasha, Oklahoma. Is that your speed now? Yeah, that? I try to keep it that way. <laughs> Don't like to get moving too quick. And you are one of how many? I've got two brothers wow. a younger brother, Andrew, and an older brother, Matthew. Look at you, the middle child. The middle child. Is it true what they say? The stigma about the, the middle child kind of getting uh, lost in the shuffle, so to speak? Uh, I've never felt that way. Okay. I, I will say that. I've never felt that way. Gotcha. But, uh, you know, it, I always hear the jokes, but I've never been bothered by it. Now, now I'm one of two. I got a younger brother, so I happen to be the oldest. And I know a little something about a house full of boys, so to speak. We had company all the time, tearing up the house, you know, snatching cushions and pillows off the couch, doing all types of WWE stunts and all that stuff. How was it in y'all's household? Similar? That was a really good description, actually. Uh, you know, Boy, there, was, there was a, you know, I've had a no broken nose from a real fight, and then uh, always got hurt with the fake fights, but did a lot of <laughs> WWF stuff in the living room. Yeah, it was uh, F at that time. I mean, yeah, WWF, I, you got to take it back. Um, man, we pl figured out ways to break things in creative ways, and we're always playing some type of stupid game in the house, whether it's playing baseball with a rolled up sock or uh, just, you know, doing whatever we could do. And breaking stuff. Absolutely. Everything we could. Light, you know, light fixtures, uh, pictures, mm -hmm. <laughs> frames. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there might be a couple frames to this day sitting in the Ford household that don't have the glass on them. That's what, uh, I'm, talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about right now. Now, when it comes to parents, man, who are you down to? Not picking one over the other, but I'm a great big daddy's boy. Everybody that knows me knows that. Even my mom knows it. I love her dearly. But my dad and I, we were like best buds growing up, and he's probably still my best friend to this day. Like, when it comes to mom and dad with you, who are you down to? <laughs> uh, well, who's more un most understanding of you and your shenanigans? I'll just say I did a lot, <laughs> a lot of dancing with my mom in the in the family room, you know, mm. the den. Uh, I hear you. But I had a great relationship with my dad also. That's big. That's big. Now let's talk about some sports a little bit, man. Absolutely. Because we, that's what we do off the clock and off the off the air anyway. How many sports did you play in your day? And I'm talking about from ground up, whether you started with Pee Wee, uh, Kinder Ball, I don't know, whatever you call it. Um, I guess I'll just I guess I'll just list them. Uh, mm -hmm. I played soccer when I was six. You know, baseball, yeah. t-ball. Uh, played baseball all through high school. Mm -hmm. um, played basketball in fifth and sixth grade. Yeah. Uh, Thought I was pretty good. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> Why not? Who's not good at that? Yeah, exactly. I wrestled, played golf, and then I, I went to a football camp once. I don't know if that counts, but I never played <laughs> never played competitive football. Went to the camp. That's all that counts, man. I played flag when I was a kid, and people gave me grief, said it didn't count. And when I when I really wanted some of it, Mom was like, uh, nah. And then when it became my choice, I kind of punked that. I punked that. So when did you know that, okay, this wrestling is the route that I want to go? Uh, man. You know, I didn't start wrestling till the seventh grade, so that was actually uh, probably the last sport that I, I tried, I guess, um, which is weird, you know. <laughs> played baseball, soccer, all those. Uh, my baseball stuck, loved baseball. Um, wrestled in the seventh grade. I had a coach, you know, talk me into coming out and didn't, didn't really enjoy it. Mm, not <laughs> I'll admit, not immediately. Um, I tried to, I, my seventh grade year was rough. Eighth grade year, I said, "All right, I'll give it one more try," and then the success started to come. And uh, Brewster's over there. Yeah, yeah, I had, I had a feeling that we'd be interrupted <laughs> real, real briefly. 
Coach Pete Brewster. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's going to have the nerve to come through the door and interrupt the podcast, but we got love for him, too. <laughs> I like it. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Just had a third party come up in here. He's just coming to holler at us for a minute. Might as well. Why not? Why not, man? Pull up a chair, Mr. Tryouts. But I, I, will, I will throw this at you, man. What Was it um, Was it success that, that, that made it like, okay, I like it better, or was it a particular coach that, that was instrumental that kind of uh, made you love it? I was going to hit you with both of those. The mm-hmm. very next thing I said before we were so kindly interrupted. By yeah. you're you're right. No, no you're it's good. all you're good, good, man. I love you're the good. bystanders. Absolutely. It is. We're very politically incorrect around <laughs> these parts. We do uh, it just like that. But in the eighth grade, started having success, uh, placed at the junior high state tournament, had a coach that uh, really, believe me, went all over Oklahoma with me and all the other guys, uh, our hi- head high school coach. And back then, he didn't care about breaking the rules. He went to everything, youth and up. Um, Got to blur those lines. Absolutely. <laughs> and he, uh, I mean, he would take us to youth tournaments on the weekend. My dad was really supportive in getting me and a few other guys to tournaments. And the success just started to come. And then I was kind you know, you don't enjoy it unless you're successful. And then when you start to get that success, especially in an individual sport like wrestling, mm-hmm. it really can uh, – really can you know bring you in drag you into the layer i guess of of the sport now working with you i wouldn't necessarily deem you to be a selfish person but um is it something is, is it that individual dynamic about wrestling that, um, that makes it better to you than a team sport just rely on you I, huh? I don't think i i don't think i'm selfish at all i appreciate that maybe a little bit my wife might disagree with you oh, on that amen. one amen. <laughs> that's a, that's an element i don't know anything about yeah, exactly yet. but um i will say that i i got a lot of out of both baseball and wrestling, but baseball I, I kind of view as a very, very individual spotlighted sport. Mm. You know, there's that team aspect, but everything you do in baseball is the spotlight's on you, whether it's the ground ball. So maybe I was a little bit, I did always appreciate that about baseball and wrestling, you know, when it's you that's doing the work, that's winning, um, you do get to take a lot of pride in being the only one that kind of, you know, had a whole lot to do with it outside of your coaches and your practice partners. Now, compare the uh, the preparation process, all right, from wrestling to any other sport. How, how different is it? Because I, I, I know what I do. I know what I think about anyway when it comes to stuff like wrestling or even um, cross country. I think, okay, it's one-dimensional. If it's cross country, we're running every day. It's pretty basic. Or if it's wrestling, we're probably beating each other up on the mat every day. But I'm pretty sure I'm missing some element, right? Uh, I think the one thing a lot of people probably don't understand about wrestling is how highly technical it is mm. um, it's a very technique oriented sport you, you know when you watch it and you don't know much about it you just think it's two guys uh, kind of going out there and just getting after it which which it is but there's so much more and when you you get involved in the sport and you start to develop that wrestling mind there's so many little things that are going on it's more like a chess match than it is a fight ah, okay now is there an off season per se when it comes to Wrestling? If so, what does that encompass? What are we doing in the off season of um, wrestling? In the off season, you know, we're we're in the weight room. As far as having an off season, it differs from kid to kid, especially at the high school level. Mm-hmm. Um, if you play another sport, that's your off season. There you go. Um, and, and you are pretty okay with I, them. Going I to want my kids. Sports. I want as many of my kids as we can play in other sports, and uh, right. I think there's a lot to be said for that for for a person, you know, growing up playing multiple sports. Um, a lot you can get out of everything, and then of course. For the kid, man, get a break. Whatever, yeah. whatever it is that stresses you out, whatever sport it is, whether it's football, basketball, wrestling, mm-hmm. I think it's important for those kids mentally to get that break um, away from it. And I try to make sure that when we're in the off season, we are lifting weights. Um, it's we're not just babysitting. Right? Yeah, it's not, we're we're everything we do is with a purpose and to be effective. But uh, it's definitely a lot more laid back than the five months from October to February. Right. Right. Do you have at least one or a few that are year rounders? Absolutely. You know, you've got some kids that the sport just hooks. Right. And we encourage that. You know, there, there's a whole kind of like AAU basketball. You know, there's a whole yeah. season after wrestling, high school wrestling season uh, called freestyle Greco Roman season. It's two completely different styles of wrestling, but um, very similar in what it takes to be successful. And we've got kids uh, that do that, try to make national teams and wrestle all summer long. Did you ever go that route when you were an athlete? I never did. Um, you know, I had my life consisted of two seasons. You know, most people have fall, winter, spring, summer. Yeah. Mine was wrestling, baseball season, all growing up. That was it. it. Seventh grade to twelfth grade wrestling season was basically uh, August to end of February, and then baseball season. You know, I'd wrestle the state tournament on a Saturday, and then go suit up for a baseball game on that next Monday. So mm. it was wrestling season, baseball season. 
Now, did you make just one state appearance as a wrestler in high school? Um, not to brag on my credentials, but yeah, I made it. I made it to this state. Collar, we, we can't just go. We that's <laughs> not enough. Cred- no, uh, four state tournament appearances. I've actually placed at it uh, four times, which uh. means making the top four. Um, I won it as a sophomore and was a runner-up as a senior. Man. And, yeah. So you still got the hardware somewhere, right? Uh, somewhere, yeah. Somewhere, come somewhere. on. Man, gotta a, I got to see that. There's a state tournament bracket laying around somewhere. Oh, I think yeah. my parents have that, and then I think I have my medals actually at the house. Man, that's huge. A little, very late congratulations. I appreciate that, it, by Thank the way. You. Now, um, do you see a, any of yourself in any one of your athletes? And, I, and when I say yourself, I don't mean like, yeah, this is the second coming of, of, Eric, <laughs> of Eric Ford. I mean, because I'm pretty sure if you got any type of ego at all, you'd be like, ah, he's, he's a little of me, but not quite. But do you see any of your traits in any of your athletes? Um, I see, you know, I, I definitely, and I think as a coach, you pick up the kids that do have maybe one trait of yours, whether it was, uh, for me, I've got kids that, you know, I was a I was a thinker. I was out on the map thinking the whole time when I was wrestling. And I've got kids that are that way. Um, I see kids that are built like me growing up. You know, kind of long, lanky, skinny. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, you always pick up on the small things. Uh, just you know, quiet. You know, don't uh. don't say a lot. When I was in the practice room, it, you know, I wasn't that yell yelling raw raw leader. I was more of the this is how we're going to do it. This is how I'm going to do it. And I hope you guys are doing it the right way. Uh, what I thought was the right way. My high school coach would probably disagree with you. Gotcha, uh, gotcha, gotcha. But it's different never good. It's quality. never good enough. Uh, True. But yeah, you def. I definitely pick up on those qualities of people. Um, and then just you know, the biggest thing is like uh, finding ways to win. I have a lot of kids. That was one thing. I was never a great wrestler, but I always was able to keep myself competitive in a match and find a way to win. I've got a lot of kids like that. Chess match. Absolutely. Now think about this right here, because I'm a basketball coach, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a basketball guy. I look at some athletes, their physical presentation. I'm like, okay, this kid might be able to help me. And immediately, I'm coming up with this, with this, I'm concocting this plan in my mind. Like, if I could get this kid to do this, then maybe this kid can help me in this element. What's your evaluation process when you first look at a kid and be like, okay, hmm, could I mold this guy? Are wrestlers even able to be molded like that, or is this something that they're just born with? Uh, Have you that, created a wrestler that's before? A, that's a really good question. Uh, I'll say this, like, you know, wrestling, when I'm looking at kids trying to get them out for wrestling, young, seventh grade, mm-hmm. sixth grade, if we can get them, there's not really a prototype body. Got you it. know, everybody's got the, that picture in their head, broad shoulders, messed up ears, yeah, short, go. squatty. Yeah, Delk. Which, yeah, yeah, Coach Delk. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a great example. Shout but, out to and, I love you, Delk, but you ain't here, so I got to <laughs> bag on you a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure he listens. But, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean that's in our, in a lot of people's minds. That's kind of what we think of as a at what a wrestler looks like. But man, I'll take anybody if mm-hmm. if you can walk and chew gum at the same time. You're probably athletic enough to wrestling and then to wrestle. And then, like I said, it's such is so technical. Uh, we can take a lack of God given ability mm-hmm. and teach you things that will make your body type or your athletic ability successful. I truly believe that, um, and I think that's one thing that's helped us is we're not going to turn a kid away. Because we don't think he's going to be good, we mm-hmm. do, we want to try to we want the challenge of like you said molding a kid um, into the best wrestler that they can be. And I've, I've heard this guy say before, y'all, that he he takes all the, the scraps, the quote unquote scraps. We don't mean that disrespectfully, but the the kids that may get cut from the basketball team at the middle school level, or maybe they're they're on the fence about whether or not they want to come out for the basketball team. He'll snatch them up and you know make chicken salad out of. Them. Absolutely, I'll take I'll take the basketball program's bottom fifteen every time. <laughs> so I got I got to watch my good ones. I got to make sure that they are showing a bunch of love so I can keep them. Or else they'll be on the mat getting. We do want it. We do want the good ones. <laughs> we'll take the good ones too. That, who, who wouldn't want the cream? Athletic man. ability, man. It does, it makes all our jobs a lot easier. <laughs> I, I, let me ask you this though. I've got an, an, an image in my mind of what the total package is. All right, and this is not just basketball specific. This is in every. In every sport, all right? Let's say you got a kid, you you normally get the kid who's abundantly talented, but their work ethic is crap. And then you got this kid who will do anything for you, run through a wall and does everything the right way, but the ceiling is just so low. Which one of those is the easiest to deal with? Or or anyway, which one would you rather deal with? Would you rather have that boneheaded athlete and just just keep trying to pull it out of them or get them to see it your way? Or would you work with the one that's going to work with you even if he doesn't have I like the challenge of both. I really do. Um, 
But if I was going to choose, I mean, just to make our, our lives less stressful and less easy, it would probably be I want the kid that's going to – that's coachable. You yeah. know, that term you hear all the time, that's coachable. Um, the one that will respond to criticism well, um, respond to your praise, and, you know, do the things that you ask of him that – to get better, to get more out of themselves. I'd rather coach that kid, but I like the challenge of the hard-headed, the knucklehead, you know, and a lot of times that's what we get in wrestling. We got to, you know, kind of breeds that attitude of being a knucklehead. Um, <laughs> kind of so, got to have that edge, don't we? Uh, you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think to be a, a, comp- a great competitor, you have to have a little bit of that in you. Um, so, you know, that, that for the perfect mix is someone who's coachable, but also a little bit of a knucklehead. Have you had one of those to where to where you were able to, well, let's say you didn't even have to do the work for them. Let's say you had that total package type of kid. Have you ever had a, one one kid that in, embodied all those qualities? I mean, he's he's talented, he's gifted, he's strong, and he works his butt off. I I can think of one for sure. Uh, he was a state champion for us. Uh, you know, he, he great kid and very coachable, but definitely had a little bit of knucklehead for uh in him and maybe not so much in the wrestling room but just mm. you know not afraid to go out and have a good time um but that not going to take that from him mm-hmm. he uh, in the wrestling room did everything we asked of him and and got a lot better and continued to improve and pretty good athlete to boot you know he just okay. he had that ability now you being the longest tenured head coach in this district. Am I right? Did I Tied with Corey Williams. Tied yeah, with Corey we, Williams. We, okay, Corey he, Williams, Trailblazer. He, he was him and I were our first year head coaching together. Corey had been in the district for a couple of years, but he first first year head coaching in Piedmont was my first year. So I imagine you've seen quite a bit. You've seen a bunch of people come and go. What is what was different now as far as the uh, the competitive climate, if you will, from eight years ago to the present? It, has there been a difference the, noticeably in terms of like in of, Piedmont yes, through our athletic the, program, right? And the types of kids and types of athletes that have come in and come out in these last better part of a decade. Um, I would say, from a coaching standpoint, you know, like you said, everybody's. I've seen a lot of coach, a lot of football coaches, a lot of basketball coaches, um, you know, but you know, I I truly believe that, and that this isn't to put anyone down. It's just I think. From an overall viewpoint, I think our coaching staff has grown uh, to a a competitive a competitive coaching staff, a great a great coaching staff, top to bottom. Uh, I think, and because of that, I think the culture of Piedmont schools is starting to change. And you know, when I first got here, it was it seemed like, and maybe I'm wrong, but it seemed like you know the success that was celebrated in my mind was not the success that I would want to celebrate. You know, so I moral believe, victories. Is that what I'm yes, hearing? Yes, moral victories. Um, Setting the bar low. You know, and there and a great thing. You know, and I've had this talk with a lot of coaches. You know, getting to the state tournament to me is the standard. Yeah. Um, and that seemed to be something that was celebrated to me. Like what our shout out to our softball program. Yes. They're they're playing for a state title tomorrow. I think, to me, you know, that's that's what should be celebrated. The opportunity to win one. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what they have tomorrow, and, and it's been a successful season for them, no matter what. But I know they want to win, and I want them to win, and that's those are the things that I wish were more celebrated the whole way along the way. But I think we're getting to that point. Getting to that point, huh? And you have actually you entered that rare class, right? Well, you've got well, you've got a ring to put on your finger. No, as I, a, as a competitor, no, I'm seeing you as, as a competitor and as a coach. Am I right? Uh, Two sports as a competitor, one one in baseball, one and then as an individual in wrestling. Um, as a coach in wrestling, we, like I said, we right now our standard is to get to the state tournament. We mm-hmm. should do that every year. As far as a dual team, uh, we have yet, not yet made that jump to where, like I said, what I consider successful. Mm-hmm. Semifinals are up, you know, top four gotcha. in the state. We, I want to at the individual state tournament. It's the same deal. Top three is what I look at for me. Is getting that's the goal. Mm-hmm. And for that to be kind of the next standard, um, we've had a lot of individuals place, and that's great. You know, that's what we preach because that's what you know that's what they, these kids do it for is yeah. an opportunity to be a state place or a state champion. Um, but you know, w- the goal is to have multiple kids competing in the state finals on Saturday night at the state fairgrounds. Yeah. Uh, the goal is to be in competition in the team race, uh, trying to take home a team trophy at the individual state tournament. And the goal is. You know, give ourselves a chance to win a dual state title. 
You know, you seem like a very realistic dude, man. Now, that's one of the things I like about you. You shoot straight and you tell it just like it is. Now, I can remember last year when you all were going to the state tournament and people would ask you, myself included, hey, man, how we feeling? You know, what, what, what do you think? And you literally looked at me and said, dude, I have zero expectations. And uh, at first, I was like, I don't really know what that means. And then you broke it down to me. Break it down for the folks. What does that mean? That's not necessarily a glass half empty approach, is it? No, not at all. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're dealing we're dealing with teenagers, so you don't know what you're going to get. I've had teams Very that simple. have gone and uh, responded great to that environment of the state tournament. You know, whether it was you know taking five guys, and then I had you know we've had teams where we took ten and they didn't respond well. Um, and so what I mean by expect zero expectations is, and I don't mean it in a negative context is we're going to go in there. We're going to feel good about what we've done throughout the year. Uh, we're not going to expect to get to a certain point. Uh, we're not going to expect to go in and win 10 out of 10 first round matches. We're not going to expect to win five. We're going to go in and just let the chips fall where they may leave everything that we have out there. Um, and if we go 10 for 10, great. And if we go three for 10, we just want to know that uh, we we worked. We did everything we needed to do to put ourselves in a position to win. You know, we maybe my expectations should be just on the effort and competitiveness that we show, but it's not in the results. It's I want to get there and just make sure our kids are doing what we need to do. Getting beat versus losing. Yeah. Break that down. Well, you got an interesting spill <laughs> on that. You say there's this difference when you get your ass whooped, right? Yeah. Versus when you lose. Absolutely. Uh, What's that all about, I, man? I've always said I can handle getting beat. I can't handle losing. Mm -hmm. uh, getting me beat in my mind, and, and, you know, this is my definition. This isn't anybody else's definition uh, unless you agree with me. <laughs> but getting beat to me is we go out there, we put everything on the line, we give ourselves every opportunity that we possibly can to win, mm -hmm. and just there's never been a competitive game, match, anything uh, where there hasn't been a winner and a loser. So you know that's coming. Uh, yeah, somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose, and um, sometimes you just get beat, man. You, yeah. you know, sometimes you get beat. You you play your best game or you wrestle your best match, and you just get beat. Losing to me is the opposite. Um, you never you didn't give yourself a chance from the get go. Um, you you effort wise, um, you lost. You know, you allowed the other person to just do what they want because your effort wasn't there. Um, it's all basically defined, defined around effort. Um, if you're putting out the effort, you're doing what you got to do, then you get beat. If you're not, then you lose, and that's on you. Yeah, that sucks, man. And I, I can speak from my little bit of coaching experience compared to yours. Is, uh, we've, you know, there, there are standard bearers, so to speak, as far as programs who have a name established already. And I've watched some of my teams lose before we even take the floor just because of the name on the opposing jersey or because of the venue. We're looking at all these trophies and all these banners and all this history. And history is the past. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, Absolutely. But it's, it's like we say all these words to them and their face just doesn't change. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, yep, yeah, we're, we're headed towards an ass whooping real quick. Yep. And sure enough, it happens just like that. Man, who is the the bar, so to speak? Maybe not in your mind when it comes to wrestling, but so who is universally understood in the state of Oklahoma to have that premier wrestling program? Tuttle Tigers. Tuttle Tigers. Now, y'all go mix it up every holiday yeah. break, don't you? We go practice with them every year. We duel them every year. Uh, but that's the standard. Uh, they're a top 15, top 20 program almost year in, year out in the country, not just the state. Mm. Um, and they can compete with anybody. They're half our size, and they go out there, they find the kids, and uh, – I know the coaching staff really well. Actually, their head coach was my assistant coach in high school. Right, yeah. um, so I've got a great connection there, which is why we go practice with them, with them why we duel them. Um, but those are the guys, man, that every year, I think anybody that's ever seen them wrestle would, would agree with me on that. So you're going back this year too, huh? Absolutely. got to get another dope. You know, y'all been running from this basketball whooping too, man. We normally get on the mat, but y'all been running. I've been we'll, waiting on you. We'll, we'll talk about that another right, day because it, it's a feeling practice room, now. We're so. in the room every day. <laughs> well, well, we got we got no time for that now. Practice has started, you know. So we're gonna go ahead and act like that never happened. Let me ask you this: I put you on the spot here. Eight years, right? So that's eight teams. Mm -hmm. Which one? Which year? I guess you could say. Do you think that you got to coach your best team? Uh. uh 2016, 2017, the last team we coached. Uh, really? And I think every year that I've been here, we've improved. I, I really, truly believe that. Um, 
and uh, you know past wrestlers always ask me what's you know how's the team going to be and I, I think a lot of them will tell you that my answer's always been we've got a chance to have the best team we've ever had this year and I agree I agree with that statement coming up for this year um, but definitely last year I mean the, it just the way they finished you know a lot of it in wrestling is what what kind of taste you have in your mouth when it's over um, not necessarily in December or January, but you know we took ten guys to the state tournament, placed five of them, um, and had two or three other guys one match away from placing. So that five state placers is the most we've had in a year. And ten state qualifiers is a tie for the record for us. Hey, that's big time right there, man. Yeah. How much longer are you gonna do it? Till that fire's done burning? Yeah, long as it takes. <laughs> you can know? you see any light at the end of the tunnel? Or is it way too soon? It's hard to think about right now. I'm still, you know, I'm still pretty young. Like you said, been doing it for eight years. Had a great opportunity given to me. Um, been doing it for eight years. Haven't accomplished near what I want to accomplish as a coach. Not mm -hmm. just in, you know, as a success standpoint, but as a um, from that that life changing perspective. I, I try to get better at that every year and. Um, I don't think I'm there yet, ready to give it up. John Marshall, you you, you spent how long there, a year or two? I spent a, I spent a year there. Well, now, was that before you got to Piedmont or? My first year out of college, um, athletic director there. I wasn't quite certified to teach yet. Mm -hmm. um, the athletic director there, a good family friend of ours, um, said, right. hey, I want you to come be the head wrestling coach and coach softball and wrestling. <laughs> and so I did it. Did you know anything about coaching girls at that point? No. That was I the first thing. That, that was first my, my, first, my first real coaching job was high school softball at John Marshall. and uh, How much of a culture shock was it? Or was it a rough adjustment at all? Because I know I overestimated it going into it. As far as just going into coaching? It, well, coaching girls uh, rather than boys. I, yeah, I definitely it, – it's not as scary as you, as you think going into I would it. Agree. You know, it, at the end of the day, girls are competitive. They want to win. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can coach that any any day, and you know they, we weren't very good, but we had fun and they they competed and that's all you can ask for. Furthermore, there is a difference in the demographic of kids in the urban areas versus where we are in the suburban areas. Absolutely. What are some of the differences, if you can remember any, from uh, the types of kids that you had to uh, deal with and had to encounter at, at John, John Marshall High versus out here in Piedmont High? Well, the problems in the, within the school were a lot different than you had. A lot more fights, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of things, you know, going on in the school. You had to eat your Wheaties then. Huh? Yeah, completely <laughs> different than Piedmont. But um, this is the good side, folks. Yeah, the good by the way. side. Yeah, we, we made it out on the other side. Yeah, and uh, you know, biggest difference to me is not once have I ever had to give you know give a kid a ride home after practice <laughs> in Piedmont. Uh, Every day at John Marshall, I had a single cab pickup, and I'd take at least five kids home all the way across no the north side of Oklahoma City, from uh, you know from Hefner Parkway to you know over the you know Kelly, mm -hmm. so all the way down Britain and Hefner, taking five kids a day home, and um, otherwise they wouldn't either they'd either not be able to come to practice or they would be sitting at the school all night. Were those student athletes that you got to deal with, from the females to the males, were they how driven were they? Um, Did you have to pull teeth to get it out of them like you and I both have to do sometimes? Yeah, here? no, I don't, not that much. You know, they wanted to be successful. And right. as far as a wrestling standpoint, which I remember much better than the softball stuff, you know, yeah. you, we had a short season and it was different. But wrestling-wise, I mean, I had kids that had a lot, of, a lot of them had never wrestled before. I think all but two mm. uh, had about 25 kids, and they wanted to improve. They uh, and and I enjoyed coaching them. Um, every day they came in, did everything you asked of them, and they wanted to get better. And we had a lot of fun, and uh, not a whole lot of success stories in there as far as wrestling goes. But right, uh, right. a lot of good kids, and uh, like I said, we worked hard every day they were in there. When did you feel? When did you notice when you got to Piedmont that okay? This is going to be different as far as how I, how I go about the process of motivating. Um, was it uh, early on or did yeah, it take a minute? Absolutely, it was early on. Uh, you know, I walked into the gym as I was taking a tour and on the wall, before I even got hired, uh, you know, on the wall they had uh, a banner for wrestling and it was individual state qualifiers. Mm. Um, 
and I'd never seen that before. Any right. any gym I'd ever been in, uh, any wrestling room I'd ever been in, I'd never seen a list of state qualifiers. And that's not to knock that accomplishment because it's a great accomplishment to be a top eight kid in the state at your right. weight, but you know that's that's an accomplishment for you. Get your certificate, put it on the wall. You can always remember it. But from my standpoint, um, my expectations are that we're going to celebrate you know getting a medal yeah <laughs> uh, right you know that's just so i knew that kind of that was what we, we were working with was just that mindset that this is you know this is a great honor um not a whole lot of wrestling tradition in piedmont and you know that's not necessarily a bad thing but um we're trying to build a wrestling tradition of success and doing the right things and uh you know, just came in, had to, had to make some changes. That banner wasn't up very long after I got hired. <laughs> Good deal. Now, you didn't ruffle any, ruffle any feathers by making that move, did you? Uh, just my previous athletic director that was uh, my athletic director, John Marshall. He's from a, he's from Piedmont. And oh, he, how about that? He was Piedmont's first wrestling state qualifier. So <laughs> <laughs> His name was up there. I, Way to I, go I, for it. I offered him the banner. I still have them. I still have the banners. I didn't just throw them away. That would have been too disrespectful. So did he, did he reject that offer on the banner? Yeah, he didn't take it. He didn't take it, man. That might have been a little pride kicking in right Yeah, now. a little bit of pride. <laughs> but, I mean, I, he's a coach. He's been a coach forever. I think he understood that uh, he understood what we were trying to do. Oh, yeah. That's good. And I, I kind of – that was a nice little segue from me to me because what I'm going to talk about now is another, I guess you can say, thing that I think can be a, a huge impediment when it comes to uh, – the success of any athletic program at this level, and that is parents. How influential have they been in your program, whether it be for the better or for the worse, in your tenure thus far? Uh, I, we've ha I've been fortunate to have a lot of great parents um, from day one, mm -hmm. uh, as far as a you know booster club goes, and them being very supportive. Um, I I would think anybody would that has wrestled Piedmont, whether it was in a duel or seen us at a tournament, would would agree with the fact that we bring a really good crowd. Um, we have a lot of supportive parents. I mean, they just, they're willing to uh, do what a lot won't as far as take their kid all over the state to wrestle when they're young. Um, and then when they get into high school, follow them all over the state. Yeah. Some all over the country, you know, uh, Virginia, Iowa. Uh, mm. Pennsylvania, they they want their kids to have the opportunity to to wrestle in those big time matches, and then uh, you know just from my end that I don't have to deal with a whole lot of parent issues. There has been some. Mm -hmm. um, can't sit here and lie. I can't make everybody happy, and that's you know go. that's just kind of the way it goes. And uh, when you're the figurehead of a program, you're going to take the brunt of it one way or the other, and uh, can't let that bother us. But I, you know, I've never felt that those parents tried to undermine me or throw me under the bus or put me in a bad situation. Oh, yeah. And I remember I remember the parent meeting, man. <laughs> I heard one time, I was, I can't remember who the coach was, but I was kind of being a fly on the wall. And he was saying, he said, man, listen, there's way too many people in this room for us all to agree on everything. Yeah. In fact, way too many of us for all of us to agree on anything. Mm -hmm. So if there's one bout, you don't have to use any names, what is the – probably the wildest encounter that you may have had with a parent, parent of one of your student athletes in your whole career coaching. Uh, and I, I see your face changing up. You know, so I know you got something. <laughs> well, um, man, I had a kid, uh, I had a kid who was a pretty good wrestler. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, he, I, I guess I made a mistake at our banquet talking about him, and, and I kind of said something to the effect of, uh, "He was the," and, and I don't mean I didn't mean it in a bad way. Still don't, but I, you know, I said he was the first one to b buy into himself, mm -hmm. um, and he was able to get everybody else on board after that, mm -hmm. as far as buying into himself as a competitor. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it was taken the wrong way. Maybe I put it the wrong way, um, but it ended up, you know, kind of being a big deal and. Get people get mad at me end up on social media and all that good stuff but oh, wow. I just thought it was pr and you know no one ever came and asked me about it you know <laughs> talk to me about it oh, it just was out know. there and mm -hmm. the complaint was out there and it kind of spread and it is what it is but 
that's probably the silliest in my mind. <laughs> I've had some other deals where I definitely understand uh-huh. uh, why there why there's an issue, but that one to me was one of the silliest. Uh-huh. Yeah. Don't, don't really understand that too much. Yeah, I don't, I don't mean to throw it. I'm glad I didn't have to name names. <laughs> yeah, good deal, good deal. We'll, wouldn't do that to you. Now, as a teacher, right? Yes, sir. You're in the classroom. I'm in the classroom too. Well, I'm in the gym half the day. You know <laughs> I, mean? I got it's peachy. What is your subject area that you teach? Uh, I teach uh, right now three sections of military history, mm-hmm. uh, one section of government. Right. And then uh, next semester, I will teach two sections of modern history and uh, two sections of the history of JFK. Oh, that's a mouthful right there, man. Yeah. Sounds elite. Yeah. If I didn't know you, I would think it was elite. Yeah, I, made, <laughs> I made that class up myself. I love it. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> cu- curriculum creator right here. Now, I can remember starting my coaching career. I was, I was 22 years old, right? And I thought that the way that I knew things was all that there was to know. And I didn't really buy into the notion that teaching and coaching kind of went hand in hand until I started having to teach while I was coaching. Would you tie those two things together for me? How do you, do you take anything from your methods of instruction from the classroom and incorporate them onto the mat or vice versa? Yeah, I coach in the classroom and I teach in the wrestling room. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, Most people say you got that backwards. Yeah, it, it seems like it, but uh, you do a lot of both in both areas. I really do believe that, but uh, the concepts are, are very intertwined. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, you coach in the classroom sometimes. Um, it's not always, you know, hey, sit there, do this, do this. Why do we do this? You know, why do we need to do this? What, what's, how does this help us in the long run? Right. And that's the coaching part of it. And then, you know, in the wrestling room, there's a lot of that. But at the same time, man, we're, we're teaching a lot about sure. the sport, about being a competitor and things like that. A lot of people would just call it coaching, but, <laughs> you know, it's teaching. You said a, a good word right there, the word why. And I think a lot of the kids these days, they ask why about everything. And I think there's some good to that and some bad to that. I think it's good because we don't want them to be robots. We want them to do things with a purpose, like you said earlier. But I do think, maybe I sound like an old grumpy dude, but as an adult, sometimes the youngins just have to do what we're telling them to do simply because we said do it. And so where do you draw that line when, when you can say, okay, I'll explain this to you, but then you go to, okay, you know what, I've done enough explaining. You're going to do this because I've told you to. Um, or else. <laughs> oh man, where do you draw the line? I I really do as a, as a coach. When whenever I'm showing a kid a move or we're doing something, I try to answer those questions up front before they uh, ask. Yeah, before you ask why, I want to give you a reason why we're doing this and not this um, before you can even ask. Um, I think that's just you know kind of my way of maybe keeping the kids quiet but at the same time I, I know they're curious because I was mm-hmm. curious I, I I was one of those that a lot of times I had questions and I never had a problem doing what a coach asked of me True. but I had a lot of questions um, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that no right? not at all but I, I, I think I recognize that in kids and I try to inform them of the why beforehand now of course you're going to have some kids that just don't get it and they're going to have to ask why anyway um, but never bothered me for a kid to be curious but the only time uh, the only time that it's ever an issue for me is when you 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 give them their reason and then they still don't want to do it mm-hmm. no we're going to do it because this is what we do uh, you right. know that then you kind of give them the oh because i said so that mom and dad because i said so mm-hmm. the tone changes a little bit yes. i would imagine yes <laughs> that's all right now i can i can say I'll, I'll lead by example on this one before i ask you this question i've had some moments when I am either on that sideline during a game or if I'm in practice mode where I get mm, somebody somebody else may look at it as too riled up, but I'll just say I get a little more flustered than I'd like to get sometimes. Some moments where I may have lost my discipline a little bit. Have you ever had some of those moments, whether you're in practice or in coaching mode in, at a match where you just like, ooh, dang, I think I'm at a gone a little bit too far right there yeah I mean (laughs) absolutely in both avenues in Mm -hmm. the wrestling room and in the uh in definitely at tournaments I have uh I've never officially been thrown out of a tournament but I have been thrown out and let back in um (laughs) I don't know how that happens but yeah how Jesse Renzo how does that work well the breach man I, the official's still wrong. He was wrong about the, <laughs> he was wrong about the call then. He's wrong about the call now. But we were we were discussing it. Uh, no time and I him. may I may have been a little 
animated while we were discussing it. I was not over the line in what I was saying or anything to him. I wasn't mm-hmm. questioning who he was as a person. I was just questioning why he made the call that he did because he's wrong. Um, but uh, he gave me the old official one more word and you're out of here. <coughs> and I turned to my assistant coach and I said, really? And he meant it. Uh, he threw me out because I said, really? And then afterwards I was like, are you, you know, I, you, in wrestling it's weird. You get kind of like a technical foul, mm-hmm. unsportsmanlike conduct. Right. They treat it the same way second when you're done. Uh-huh. And then there's a flagrant foul, which oh, wow. is just you're out of there. You know, but Coaches to me, get the flagrant foul? Yeah, coach can get a flagrant <laughs> foul. It's take, or, you know, flagrant misconduct is oh, what they you. call it. Yeah. Um, which to me is like picking up a chair and throwing it across the gym, you know. Yeah, that'd be pretty, and, pretty and I didn't do anything like that. So I just questioned, you know, why am I getting thrown out as opposed to take a team point away mm-hmm. and give me my one unsportsmanlike and go on. And uh, I think at the end of the day, I beat him with logic on that. <laughs> <laughs> so is that how you got back in? That's how I got you, back you in. He changed, it, he changed it to an unsportsmanlike uh you know, but flagrant is not necessarily defined in the wrestling rule book as to what flagrant is, but I think we all have a have it in our mind of what something flagrant is. Right. And, and I didn't feel like it was. So they left it up to a judgment call. Oh, yeah. Yeah. flagrant. When it does, flagrant. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah. Like, yeah. Now, listen here, Mr. Coach Ford. You are coaching middle school football this year, huh? Yes. Is this your first rodeo with it? Never coached football before. Don't know anything about it, for mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> now, I won't ask you how the season's going necessarily. Have you learned anything from this experience that, that maybe you didn't know coming into it? Uh, you seem like somebody that, that, that looks for, okay, what can I get out of this? I think as far as uh, just the structure of how a football program is operated, mm-hmm. um, everything's so organized uh, to the T. And, and not that we're not organized in wrestling or basketball, but I mean – if they say it's a five minute period, it's a it's a five minute period, you know, and we're moved on to the next thing. And in wrestling, if I say it's a five per- minute period, that means it's a five minute period if we all get it. We all get right. Otherwise, it's going to be a ten minute period, and the rest of it we can work on tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But I always feel like it's important, and but I don't th- mean that as a bad thing. It's just the leadership that a head football coach has to have because in a you know in a football program they're dealing with 15 adults and 100 kids yeah um and in my wrestling program i'm dealing with three adults and you know 50 kids right um it's it almost sounds like a pe class almost. yeah so you know in a football program there's a lot more organization that goes into it and just picking up on these coaches and uh, we've got great football coaches uh picking up on how you know our head football coach manages his program mm-hmm. and i think from that aspect, I've learned a lot. And then just from an athletic standpoint, just learning how kids uh, respond to different coaching for different sports. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that uh, that you've been able to take from wrestling and, and incorporate it into football? Later, Pete. Yeah, later. <laughs> or vice versa. <laughs> um, wrestling to football, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, other, other than just the, the, the beat them up, bang, bang. Well, that, there you go. Uh, the mentality aspect of it, for sure. It, you know, in wrestling, you got to be willing to be – uh, what I've been telling our kids all this last week is fast, physical, and violent. And by violent, I mean go. just when we hit something, it, it's done violently. Uh, when we hit a move, we make sure we're hitting it as violent as we can within mm-hmm. the rules. Right, right, right. Um, Don't get scared, folks. But that, we're not malicious yeah, people. Not malicious people. We're just competitors. Uh, but from wrestling to that, I think that's something that wrestling can bring to a football player. And then as far as uh, from football to wrestling, just – learning how learning that um everybody on the football field has to be heading in the same direction doing the doing the the right things in order for one play to be successful mm. um and in wrestling i think that we can take that and and understand that everybody in the room has to be working towards one one going one direction in order for the guy across me to, from me to get better uh, practice partners are huge. No in brother wrestling. in law. Yeah, no, bro- exactly. No <laughs> brother in law. And that's a term you hear a lot in wrestling. Um, but everybody has to be working together in order for everyone to get better. And that's something maybe I didn't have as good an understanding on uh, for the sport of wrestling as I should. But I think I'm, I'm learning every day being around football that that's, you know, that's a huge thing. Now, break this stigma for me because a lot of people think that their head coach is just don't do much they, they just delegate to their to their their assistant coaches and, and the assistant coaches are the foot soldiers that go in out and do all the meat and potatoes of the work 
But you in I, well, we can't say off season anymore because it's it's time now. Mm-hmm. You're still one man in it, aren't you? Absolutely. As the head coach, you are one man. He's one man, folks. In in the in the wrestling room with all his athletes because his other assistant coaches, shout out to him, they are fulfilling other obligations. Let's say that right now. There you go. How's that, man? How's that been for you? Has it been too much to bear some days, or are you just like, okay, yeah, I'm getting more acquainted with my guys? Uh, no, I, no, because I think it's a situation I've been in um, almost every year for a little bit. Mm. Um, in the past, I've been lucky enough to have you know middle school guys that were my assistant wrestling coaches. So middle school football, they don't do as much after school. Uh, but it was it would still be three four days a week that I was by myself with sometimes more kids than what we've got now. Mm. Um, former cross head cross country coach was my assistant wrestling coach for uh, you know my first four or five years, and so he you know had the same process. He's in cross country uh, season shorter than football season, but uh, that still sets you back. What, yeah, two months by yourself, something like that. Yeah, exactly. So you know in in wrestling I. The hardest part is not having someone to bounce ideas off of. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, having that, you know, because I don't want to take away from their, like you said, other obligations as far as coaching football. Right. Um, I want them focused on that. Not, I don't want just my kids all in during football season. I want those guys all in. Now yeah. I want them to look forward to wrestling season, but I'm not going to bug them yeah. 24 hours a day with wrestling questions. <laughs> um, and I still do I, every now and then ask them, but um, that's the hardest part for me is, uh, the brainstorming aspect of w- what do we need to do today to get better and it's nice to have good assistance that you can bounce those questions off of once I have that idea of what we what got to do to get better today um, coming up with the practice on how to do it is really the easy part for me bouncing ideas off of people man I think that's big because I- I'm thinking I'm thinking about your career ba- based on what you told me not just today but even before today you've got uh, you've got softball on your resume you've got head wrestling obviously on your resume and what we haven't talked about yet is golf in the spring on your resume but and I'm not even going there yet I'm thinking about the fact that have you ever before this year been an assistant coach not a true assistant coach no not a true assistant not coach. a true assistant yeah, coach I, so, I is, was an assistant golf coach for a year which uh-huh. was maybe one of the best jobs in education <laughs> um, and then you know I did some I helped some guys uh, towards the end of college, you know, as far mm. as when I could coaching. Um, but no, I've ne- yeah, that's a good, that's on a good paper, point you brought up. I've ne- on paper, I've never been a true assistant coach. And that's you know, I guess what I'm getting at by bringing that up, other than the fact that that's kind of fascinating, is is um, I've seen some 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 head coaches that although they may be good at what they do, they can be so freaking stubborn. Mm-hmm. super headstrong and it's like their way is is what's that's the end all that's the be all and the end all but you don't seem that way you seem like you know you take you have very little ego when it comes to coaching if somebody has a better idea or somebody has something they want to present to you you give it a legitimate look and take it under consideration before you do whatever needs to be done is that where'd that come from man um i you know i've just never been uh I've never been a poor sport, you know, I, from the time of eight on, eight years old on or so. Yeah. Um, and so my mom always said that, you know, in a close match, she wouldn't know if I won or lost in wrestling based on how I reacted. Uh, I just reacted the same way. And um, I think I I understand, I hope I understand that my way is not always the best way. Right. Um, and I'm not so arrogant to believe that, that that is the case, that I know everything. Um, and I'm always looking to learn about the sport, about coaching in general. And uh, so if I've got to take ideas from someone else and that's what I think is going to make us the most successful, then that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get you spoken like a true leader over there. Well, yeah. I, you know, I believe leadership <laughs> is, uh, one, being able to – step out of the way and let other people do do res- have responsibility mm-hmm. um, I think it's you know taking my idea of management is taking as many good ideas as you possibly can and then it's my decision at the end of the day of which one we're going to go with sometimes it's mine sometimes it's somebody else's um, but I'm going to set the path on what I believe is the best to set us up for success I think that's key man a lot of people think that just because you didn't do what, what they suggested or what they recommended that you didn't listen Mm-hmm. Uh, that's false. Like I took everything, 
I weighed the pros and the cons, and at the end of the day, I felt comfortable doing this, and so, eh. Since your name's on it, right? Yeah, your yeah. name, my, my name's attached to it. <laughs> mm. Now, have you ever been in that situation where you went with, where you went with somebody else's idea, even though it was not necessarily what you wanted to do, and then it ended up going bad, and you're like, Argh. um, I don't think I've ever not taken ownership for a decision that I've made as far as the wrestling program goes. Mm-hmm. Um, if if it's a good decision, <laughs> then great. It's a it's a team team win for us whether it's you know competing or just a practice um if it's a bad decision then you know what that's on me let's start over and and find where we need to start back from um but no i've never i've never regretted a decision Uh, i've questioned myself at times Um, i don't know if we ever stopped doing that yeah but i think that again i think that's something we have to do to get better i've questioned a bunch but i don't think i've ever regretted it um, sometimes you, you just got to make sure and make sure you're observing is it working or is it not if yeah. it's not working then we need to scrap it and we need to get moving on in another direction as quick as we can how much time do you give it to start working I mean because I know there's a fine line between patience and wasting time yeah I mean that's a that's a that's a tough question I mean I think it's best way for me to answer it is is and I think you would agree that as a coach you just kind of feel it you know mm-hmm. uh, you see it body language you're reading your kids um, And then, you know, as far as like wrestling, you know, a lot of times it's a technique or a practice wise. Um, I look at my best kids and if they're not doing it, they're not getting it, then it's time to move on. Yeah. That's good. The rest of them beneath them probably won't. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have, do you have many days where you, where you have a plan and then you go into that room and you can tell early on that this is going to be a different kind of day to where you just basically just throw the whiteboard or throw throw the practice plan aside and you just swing it you have any of those days absolutely <laughs> absolutely uh, you know, I go into every practice with a plan of what I what we want to get done that day mm-hmm. um, and if you know if we're maybe maybe even work we come in that day and I can tell we're gonna get more than what we're gonna get done as far as what I have down on paper mm. then we're gonna we're gonna utilize that opportunity to turn it up a notch um, and then obviously the bigger the, the bigger case here and, and what's going to happen more is you come in and you're not going to you, you can tell early that you're not going to get done what you want to get right. done. That happens a lot more than yeah. the other way but sure. uh, then it's about changing gears and finding a way. You know I've, I've sent whole teams home mm-hmm. at 3 o'clock you know when the, as soon as the school let me kick them out I've uh, you know that's one way and then you know what usually come back the next day it's the best practice we've had all year um, I've stopped everything we were doing done you know an hour's worth of conditioning I've you know you try to find a way to get something out, out of that, that day, day. <laughs> yes yeah absolutely right now here's what we're going to transition into because you and I both we got to go we got to go support the football team absolutely this evening. so we'll put a wrap on this thing but I'm going to soften you up on our way out marriage life man Yes. How's Amanda, man? Your, your, your wife. For, for those of y'all who don't know Eric Ford, ladies and gentlemen, he's got a great wife, man. She's a great lady. Amanda, he's getting ready to talk about it. Ready to go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> man, she's awesome. She's got my back. Uh, tonight, she's going to Stillwater for a homecoming football game. Her and I are on different sides of the aisle on that. You know, I'm I'm a Sooner through and through. And she's right. a Cowboy. Um, cowgirl, cowgirl, I guess. Yeah. I, a be Cowboys great. fan. There you um, go. But... You know, that's never been something that's gotten away other than last year we watched our first Bethlehem game together. That wasn't good. That was the first one? Yeah, first one we've watched Ooh. together. And Sooner's got the W, by the way, Oh yes. for those that don't remember. Pretty sure but, she's, uh, she's still hearing that, isn't she? Yeah, she's, she's a little bit – I I don't know. She's a worse loser and a worse winner than I am. You know, I'm a better loser and a better winner. She likes to rub it in when you win. And, <laughs> uh, and I've told her this a bunch of times. She'll agree with me. So, But, you know, bagging on her inside, she's – awesome she supports me um she understands the coaching life mm-hmm. you know because you, you know as well as i do you're not home no when it gets when it comes down to you know for us it's november to february that's right you're not home uh it's, uh-huh. it's sometimes it's five nights a week you're out and about and uh and what's what's crazy is we we is this this how you know coaches are crazy because we wouldn't have it any other way absolutely <laughs> love every second of it um but you know she comes to every wrestling event uh that we have yeah. that she can get to mm-hmm. and um i know she's got my back we make a great team nobody else i'd rather do it with we have a lot of fun and right. uh, uh 
you know, try to be successful as a, as a whole. How much of that do you bring home, though, from coaching? Because I, cause I know you, you're a thinker, man. It stays on your head uh, a lot, doesn't it? I try not to pass it off on her. I've got my, you know, I've got my notebook here today. I planned on taking notes while we did this, but we got rolling too fast. Yeah, and yeah. To. But I, I write uh, to cope with my stress as much as I can. Sometimes I just draw, <laughs> and, not, and not well. I just kind of sit there and doodle. Mm-hmm. Um, but I try not to pass any of it off on to her. Sometimes, you know, I do. Um, nine times out of ten, she's very supportive. Um, knows knows where it's coming from. Yeah, and and the one time out of ten, she's not supportive. She's uh, she's she's giving me the dose of medicine that I need. Right. To wake up and get out of it. Well, I tell you and what. That, speaking of man, would you like to use this platform to make an announcement that a lot of folks that know you already know, man? Uh, yeah, we we'll, we will be our expecting our. Uh, first addition to our family uh in march uh hope, hopefully we make it till after the wrestling season but the timing is close if we're a little early then if she's a little early then well it is a girl by the way yeah uh, if she man. comes a little early then it'll uh it'll cut it tight hopefully we get through wrestling season though no problem how nervous are you man scared to death are you really? Absolutely. Well, you wear it well, man. I appreciate it. I mean, if you know, you can't stress about it because it's happening. But it uh, it scares me to death. But it's it's an exciting scared and uh, a, a new chapter in my life I look forward to. And like I said, I get to do it with uh, my partner in crime and no one I'd rather do it with. That's big time right there, Eric Ford. I appreciate it. You listeners, man, we appreciate you all taking time to hear us out on X's and O's Sports Speak. Got my favorite guy right here, Eric Ford, letting you behind the curtain on how us coaches live. So until the next time, folks, y'all be easy, and we'll hit you once a week from this point. Later.